Tonight, KTN does it again, going the extra mile to bring you not only the most comprehensive news, but also the most informative features. Tonight, my co-anchor, Betty Kialo, debuts her first episode of How Things Work, a fascinating introduction to the inner workings of day-to-day -day technologies. Ever wondered how planes work? Find out next in this premiere episode of How Things Work. Air travel is exploding. Millions of people, thousands of aircrafts in the air every single day. Aviation has evolved from luxurious experiences to a convenient mode of transport. But what goes on behind the scenes? We're currently flying 35,000 feet of... Tonight, we tell you how planes work. The second greatest thrill in the world is flying. The first is landing. Air journeys all start with a pre-flight check or what pilots like to call setting up. Concept for the Embraer, most of the switches are in 12 o'clock, if not all of them. This one is on, uh, but once the engines come on, then it will go back to 12 o'clock. So all of them, and the ones that are switches like this ones, it should be in with no light. So when you push it out, a light illuminates telling you it's not in the normal position. As he finishes with setting up, Captain Marco War goes round the aircraft, checking for any cause of concern that may include leaks. Back in the cabin, the cabin crew is also gearing up for the flight. The flight passer who is in charge of the cabin crew receives information on different aspects of the flight that include the number of passengers expected, if there are any passengers with special needs, just to name a few. This is what happens when you are waiting to board the plane. When everything is ready, passengers begin settling in, and in a few minutes, with all procedures followed, all doors tightly closed, the captain and his first officer are ready to take on the sky. When the engines are started, uh, this is what you use to add thrust or reduce thrust as required. So, basically, when you add thrust, uh, the jet engine produces, uh, it spools up, which uh, sucks in air and it is compressed. After being compressed, it's uh, introduced, some fuel is introduced in the mixture and ignition and it burns as it burns. It goes out as exhaust and that moment of it going out it, uh, produces a forward moment for the aircraft to push it to go forward. something called the uh, forces of flight or the principles of flight. There is uh, different forces acting on an aircraft for it to fly. There is lift, uh, weight, drag and thrust. So thrust is what acts uh, laterally on the aircraft to push the aircraft forward. And drag is the price you pay for, lift, for thrust basically. Because as you move the air moving on the body of the aircraft creates the drag through the friction that uh, it has with uh, the aircraft surface basically. Lift is created with uh, the shape of the air aircraft wing. Basically it's shaped in such a way that uh, the, the camber on top is, is uh, different from the one at the bottom. So basically it's, it's a bit rounded. So for the air particles moving across the camber on top and below, the ones on top move at a faster speed than the ones below. So it creates a differential pressure, which creates now lift. So those two forces, lift and thrust, get you up and forward. To feed the enormous jet engines is no easy feat. Air transport companies have to part with millions of dollars annually. Maintenance and service also come at a cost and a big one for that matter. 
While airborne, anything could go wrong, from extreme changes in the weather to fires. However, Captain Samero tells me that the aircraft is designed to handle most emergency situations. There are enough warnings before something goes wrong. Every time you go, you, you build a competency, a skill, to deal with maybe an engine fire or, or an engine failure or things like that. So like I said, with experience, you ba basically learn how to deal with it these things uh, and uh, it's human of course when I have an engine fire or a failure doesn't mean I don't get uh, you know I don't get uh, not scared yeah of course I will be concerned but I have to, to bear in mind that you know I have a hundred plus passengers in the back plus my crew and my co-pilot and we need to work together and make sure we get the aircraft safely on the ground this is an aircraft simulator. It is here that pilots are trained to deal with emergency situations from engine fires to weather phenomenon like thunderstorms in preparation to become qualified pilots. just like cars often need repairs and service. It is here in the hangar that the huge jets come for attention, from changing of destroyed blades due to bird strikes to changing of the landing gears, you name it, it's all done here. Something that caught my eye while at the hangar was this, the Tag Master. You have probably seen them while at the airport. These are used to drag aircrafts from the hangar where they are parked to the ramp where passengers board the planes. It might look small compared to the aircrafts, but the tug master can pull up to 400 tons of weight, including the Boeing 777. Air travel is changing from technology to piloting. Every day in the air warrants for new information, new techniques on how to take off and to land. If you have an incident, or maybe you don't do a very good landing, you will go home not feeling good until you, you, know, you redeem yourself the next time you come and you try and do, do a better job. And this is how planes work. Betty Callum, how things work.